Hey people YouTube! I know it's only been like a few days since my last video. I've been doing a lot of videos lately. It's just because a lot of things have been happening. I'm sorry. Uh, so, it has been a productive two weeks. So I'm going to do like, kind of like a things I've learned list about being trans full time. Like things that they don't tell you about as far as like when it comes to presenting female for as long, for, for multiple hours at a time. You know how people treat you and all these different things so i'm just gonna go and get right into it so i think probably the first thing i've learned which is actually i think today was probably the funniest one of the list was uh, doing makeup it's great doing makeup i enjoy doing it i like the way i look at makeup but what's pretty funny is when you have a runny nose like right now my nose is super stopped up so i've been blowing my nose all day do my makeup look good walked right in blew my nose immediately had this big bald patch right here and you can see my five o'clock shadow starting to poke in there because I basically all of the the makeup from right here was just gone just gone from me wiping my nose constantly so like every, like every time I blow my nose I grab like I'd like smear my hand on my face a little bit and like try to like disperse what makeup I had left like maybe I can hide this a little bit <clears throat> It didn't work out very well, as you can see, because my, my mustache is poking through. Two, uh, I don't, I still don't have enough like female clothing. Like I like wearing women's clothes. Like in general, I've always enjoyed wearing women's clothing. Obviously, duh. Bleh. Wearing a wig for eight, nine hours a day can get pretty irrit not irritating, but it gets in the way because it starts getting matted near the end of the day. You know, especially it starts getting a little. Uh, frizzy so you try like maintaining it and pulling it down and kind of like brushing it out of your face and stuff like that but it does start getting frizzy pretty pretty quickly um you know normally beforehand i'd only wear it for a few hours you know if i was going out to an event or anything like that well, let's say like max five hours maximum and that's that's pushing it for me being out in public presenting as female well with the wig on anyway uh, three the way people treat you is different so um, at my work, so I've been presenting full-time female everywhere now, just everywhere, like at work, at home, like at my son's school, and everyone has been super amazing about it. Like, my, I was I was really surprised how my work reacted because you know the first couple, like the first day I came in presenting as female, you know they were really good. Like they were, everyone was on top of calling me Christy and her pronouns, and they would slip up every now and then, but they're going to. It's not that big of a deal. My work changed all my login information, my, um, like everything, everything just kind of lined up and everyone's been super awesome about it. And even the people in my party or the people in my group have been, um, sorry, I had to stop and blow my nose. So I'm going to edit that out. Yeah, edits. Boom. So, um, power of editing. I'm still learning how all this stuff works. Um, but no, all of them have been really good about calling me Christy and her and all this stuff. Now there's still, I ha I've had a couple like really big dysphoria moments this week, especially when it came to my, like my shoulders, when I see myself walking down the hallway and I'd see a reflection of myself in like a, a window or a mirror or whatever. And I still get, I get like a dysphoric like, yeah. or like at one point in time, I was trying to re-record my voicemail message, my voicemail mailbox password, my message, I mean, to be Christy instead of Sean. And every time I'd record it, it just sounded worse and worse. And it sounded super masculine, which is like, it's frustrating because I thought I had made plenty of, like a lot of progress in my voice. Like not a lot, but I've been making progress in my voice. But then I heard it and it just made, like it kind of bummed me out a whole bunch. And I was not, I was having a hard, hard day that day. Um, been going to the women's bathroom consistently, which is something that was scary the first time doing it and I'm still a little nervous going in there because it's still new to me um, and I mean that's been going fine I'd say probably the long-winded answer for for number three so your number four well, I was gonna go into a four but then I realized I really don't have any other real points I mean that's really all it is I'm tired of the fact that my pants don't have pockets in them which is weird like I, I mean it's stereotypical girl pants are known for not having pockets and they also button backwards from what I'm used to. So that's taking some getting used to. I feel like a five year old learning how to tie shoes for the first time, like eh, 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 eh. But that's not a big deal. But so a couple things that I think is interesting about this week. So I went to go see my doctor two days ago because my you know my I had a 
my tonsils really swollen up and I was just not feeling very good. So what I decided to do is I, I went to go see my doctor and he was like, you know, hey, by the way, since you've been on hormones for six months, you're actually qualified to get your legal name change and gender marker change for free to the University of Texas. And I didn't even know that that was a thing. No one had explained that to me. And he printed off a list and he was like, hey, so here's your options for you right now. Since you've been on HRT for six months, you can either uh, pay a lawyer to do it, which is the most expensive. You can get all the forms and do it yourself, which is like three to four hundred dollars. Or the University of Texas, the law students offer a free thing for those who are going through transition. So that, and they will cover, they, they will do the transition paperwork for you for your name change for free. So they get, so they can have the experience of doing it. And I was like, that, that's amazing. I didn't even know that was a thing. And so I was like super psyched about it, got all the information about it. And probably when I get a little bit more free time, once I get the house thing sorted out, then I'm gonna definitely get on that. Because, I mean, I really want to get done now. My GoFundMe has actually been getting some ground. I've made $30. Thank you, by the way, for the two donations. I mean, it, it really... Thank you. Um, like, it really... It, it's not, like... It means a lot to me. Thank you. A couple other things. So, when I was also going to go see my doctor, besides mentioning the name change thing, he also said that now I can also start increasing my dosages of hormones for uh, estrogen. So... Uh, a month ago, I went from two milligrams to four milligrams on my six months. Um, but then when I was there th today, or t t Tuesday, I mean, he said I can go from four milligrams to six milligrams a day. So that's pretty awesome. So now I can actually increase my dosage. So that's pretty sweet. Um, and here's going to be kind of some TMI areas. So one, something that no one told me about. Like, I did not know about this. No one I had known had talked about it. Because it's, I can understand why. It's a fairly private subject. But I'm going to tell you all something very interesting, which I found interesting. Did you know when you're on HRT for a while, your biome downstairs changes? Does it make sense? Like it makes sense that it's going to change, but my penis smells like a vagina now. Yep. Like the, the smell is significantly different from what it was before. Like before, I mean, it, it didn't, it wasn't a bad smell and it's not a bad smell now. But it's too, like from when I started doubling up on my hormones to from two milligrams to four milligrams, there was a very distinctive smell change that I had. And just like, it was almost night and day, not night and day, I'd say it was probably over the course of a week for me starting on four milligrams until I, you know, for about a week, I was noticing just a smell changing pretty drastically. And it's not like, I clean myself. Like I take a shower every day. I scrub myself down every day. So it's not like it's dirty or filthy or anything. So it's really interesting to see like, it makes sense. I mean, obviously, you're more female hormones and stuff like that. That was something that I thought was just fascinating. So, you know, for all those who are out there thinking about it, heads up. I was surprised at that. Thank you all again for watching. I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter because I have a tendency of making them run long. And I got to edit this guy down just a little bit. Um, please donate to my GoFundMe. If you could please share it on Facebook, if you want to share it on Twitter, like you have no, like if you, if you donate to it, I'll mention you on here. Like if you have anything, like if you have a, a GoFundMe or any of that stuff, comment in the comments down below and I'll make sure I share it on my Facebook and I'll share it on my Twitter. So that way you get as much exposure as you can get and I get as much exposure as we can get because I want everyone to get the funding that they need for their transition. So, um, like, comment, subscribe, complaints, or any of that, you know how the YouTube bannery things work. Please just, y'all have a good day. Thank y'all for watching.